Senator Sinema. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses for being here today. In 2018, nearly 86% of the hard narcotics that flowed into Arizona came through our ports of entry. Over the years, the Sinaloa cartel and other criminal groups have moved millions of pounds of methamphetamine and heroin from Mexico through Arizona. Arizonans so clearly bear the brunt of Washington's failure to address our southern border crisis. But drugs aren't the only thing trafficked across our southern border. People, including women and children, are often smuggled across the southern border, sometimes against their will. On their journeys and when they arrive, they face exploitative conditions, including forced labor and physical and sexual abuse. Earlier this year, the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, Joaquin Guzman, also known as El Chapo, was convicted of laundering billions of dollars through the U.S. banking system. Federal agents now believe that his brother has picked up the cartel's operations in Arizona. Think about that for a second. The most dangerous drug cartel operating in Arizona is fueling its operations to the tune of billions of dollars through the same U.S. banks that we all use. It's pretty outrageous. So I also serve on the Homeland Security Committee, and as Arizona's senior senator, I'm working to secure the border with a smart, comprehensive, and bipartisan approach. But to defeat these drug cartels and keep Arizona families safe, we need more than just physical border security. We need to cut off the finances that fuel their operations and shut them out of the U.S. banking system. So we're working to strengthen U.S. anti-money laundering laws to stop drug cartels, fight terrorism, and end the scourge of human and sex trafficking. After this drug money makes its way through the U.S. financial system, cartels like Sinaloa park these dollars in shell companies or in real estate. Mr. Guzman's trial illustrated all of these methods. So one way to prevent criminals from hiding behind companies and operating in plain sight is through the collection of beneficial ownership information. So I'd like to start there. Mr. Blanco, thanks for being here. How would collecting beneficial ownership information at the time of incorporation enhance FinCEN's ability to cut off drug cartel financing? It would be tremendous. As you know, Senator, uh, whether it's a front company, whether it's a shell company, or whether they're using nominees, uh, Chapo Guzman isn't going to put the company in his name. That's not going to happen. Right. Right. And, and <laughs> I guess maybe now he can, but, you know, <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. So at the end of the day, what you want is you want to put people on the line when they come and they open their company and they look at you eye to eye. Who are you? Where do you live? What are your company? Who are the beneficial owners? That's different. And also knowing them knowing that you're holding them accountable, which is incredibly important in whatever legislation you're going to draft. You need to make sure that the penalty uh, is, is appropriate. Thanks. Uh, and I mean appropriate, right? You're not, you're, for example, as, as the FAI was saying earlier, as Steve was saying earlier, you don't want to hold, we're not after the mom and pop, we're not after the farmer. We want the information. We want to we go after the person who is intentionally thwarting right. or the criminal who's going after it. 